Welcome to an introductory lesson on DMARDS. By the end of this lesson, you'll have an appreciation of what DMARDS are, what they're used for, the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis, the mechanisms of methotrexate, the adverse effects, and the contraindications. First, let us explore what DMARDS are used for. DMARDS are commonly prescribed for rheumatoid arthritis, a chronic progressive autoimmune disease that causes systemic inflammation at the joints and destruction of bone and cartilage. Common symptoms include swelling, pain, heat in the joints, persistent fatigue, stiffness of the joints, and weak muscles. So let's talk about the molecular basis of rheumatoid arthritis. Initially, professional antigen-presenting cells, such as B cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells, present arthritis-associated antigens to CD4 plus T cells in the local lymph nodes. This initiates the inflammatory cascade. The CD4 plus T cells then migrate to the synovial joints where they secrete interleukin-2 and interferon gamma, promoting inflammation. The secretion of interleukin-2 also promotes the differentiation of naive T cells into Th1 cells. The activation of fibroblasts leads also to fibrotic formations within the joint capsule of the synovial joints. These activated fibroblasts then secrete interleukin-6, which attracts neutrophils to the synovial joint, exacerbating inflammation by promoting the synthesis of prostaglandins. In conjunction, this all leads to eroded cartilage and joint damage, presenting itself as the symptoms that rheumatoid arthritis patients suffer. DMARDs are the newest class of anti-rheumatic drugs, and there are many types of them, though all work to decrease the level of pain and inflammation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis to prevent further joint damage. Some types of DMARDs include methotrexate, hydrochloroquine, sulfasalazine, leflunamide, and certain monoclonal antibodies. Each work through a different mechanism, but all work to reduce the inflammation in a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. So let's talk about methotrexate and why it is used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. In high doses, methotrexate is used in chemotherapy. However, in smaller doses, it may be used in rheumatoid arthritis to target the rapidly dividing immune cells, such as macrophages and the Th1 cells. Methotrexate is a synthetic analogue of folic acid and it competes with folic acid for binding to the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase and when it binds it inhibits this enzyme. This inhibition interferes with DNA synthesis by reducing the amount of purine and pyrimidine supply in rapidly dividing cells. So what are some contraindications with the use of methotrexate? Tetracycline and the oral contraceptive pill have both been shown to increase the bioavailability of methotrexate and have thus been contraindicated. Penicillins and cyclosporins can also lower the renal elimination of methotrexate and thus have been contraindicated. Methotrexate is also in contraindicated in patients with renal failure as this impedes on their ability to clear the drug. Some common adjuncts to the use of methotrexate includes folic acid supplementation, which has been shown to alleviate some common gastrointestinal and oral mucosal side effects without impacting on the beneficial anti-inflammatory effects of methotrexate. It was also shown that the use of methotrexate is safe in combination with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as well as corticosteroids. The most common side effect of methotrexate is nausea and vomiting. Other common side effects include alopecia, which means hair loss, peptic ulcers, impairment of fertility, damaged liver, dizziness, fatigue, and fever. You might recognize that some of these side effects are the same as those found through the use of chemotherapy, and that is because methotrexate in high doses is actually used in chemotherapy. The gastrointestinal side effects are caused by methotrexate targeting rapidly turning over cells such as the stomach's epithelial mucosal cells. Apoptosis of these cells leads to a decrease in mucus secretion and thus a decrease in the protective layer of the stomach. This can therefore lead to vomiting, nausea and even peptic ulcers. 
Liver damage from taking methotrexate is believed to be due to the buildup of adenosine in the liver. Levels of adenosine are increased by methotrexate and this can lead to fibrosis in the liver over time. However, this effect can be overcome by folic acid. Additionally, birth defects are believed to due to folic acid deficiency. As methotrexate's mechanism of action utilizes folic acid, it depletes the body's stores of it. Folic acid deficiency has also been linked to neural tube defect and therefore the drug should be avoided in women who are pregnant or seeking to become pregnant. We hope that after today you have gained a greater understanding on DMARDS. For more videos like this, please subscribe and like.